Okay, so um, we've been referenced a couple of times in the previous presentations. Uh, this is going to be a presentation about the digital and online platform we're building to be able to host multiple different research frameworks and allow them to share information and questions and work together. Um, so to answer the question of uh, this uh, whole session, yes we can. Um, this project uh, at the moment has hundreds of contributors. Uh, it's covering the areas of Northwest England, Northeast, East, East Midlands, uh, and Southeast Scotland. It's funded by Historic England. Um, Southeast Scotland is not part of England, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're helping out with the beta testing. And uh, this is through our organization, Lambert Research, but we are being supported by uh, Open Contacts or the Alexander Institute, um, which is based, uh, I don't know if you guys know Open Contacts. It's, Contacts, it's Sarah and um, Eric Kanza. They're doing some great stuff. They're helping us with the linked data aspect. Um, and so, to start this project, we went out to all these different regional research frameworks and asked them, what would you guys like? And this is just uh, a random set I just grabbed. Um, we had, you know, over about sort of close to 50 different sort of things that this platform was suggested that it could happen and what it could do. Um, people wanted the ability to be able to comment on questions or on paragraphs, so you could have a discussion online. Um, people want to have accessibility, so uh, if you have a screen reader or something like that and you know you can't normally, you don't normally go through the website like uh, most everyone else, you'd still be able to do that. Um, you know, pretty URLs that don't have like 6, 12, 13, bunch of numbers and letters and random and that you just can't remember. Um, so these are sort of the requests we got and we started pull pulling this all together. And in the last year, we've built basically a feature list and we started building the website. Um, when we came to deciding on how we're going to build this website, this platform, um, we were looking at a content management system. Um, basically, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel and also create something that someone, everyone else had to relearn. So the big sort of websites that control, uh, I think it's about more than about two thirds of all websites on the internet, as far as I can tell, use one of these three systems. Um, and so, and they're all, they all use the same sort of coding language. And so we've actually built it um, at the moment on top of WordPress, but should in a couple of years that change, we might go to Drupal. Um, we've tried to use as least, as amount of like, tried to basically be tied into one platform. We don't want to have that problem of vendor lock-in where we've designed this. And then in a couple of years, um, everyone abandons WordPress and we're stuck with WordPress because we did everything in WordPress. So um, ideally, hopefully this doesn't happen and we stay with the system for a while, but in a couple of years, if we need to, we'll be able to change it. Um, <laughs> and basically, one of the sort of, I'm just gonna pick out sort of three major things. We only have 10 minutes to go over it. Um, right here, it's basically one of the requests uh, that we had was from the various different partners is they wanted to be able to theme it. They didn't want all the sites to look exactly the same. Um, so this is the one from Southeast Scotland. Uh, and I did nothing of, of this. They've done all the design. Um, we basically have a platform there that they can use and they choose whatever design they want. Um, and you know it varies a little bit, so it has their main logo. Um, colors, but basically anyone who's using it can choose how they would like it to look. Um, here's the one for the East Midlands. So this is the one we're sort of moving over. Uh, basically, you can kind of see there's this uh, checkered uh, link sort of thing on the new one. And that is because the old one had the same one. So we've basically taken most of the theming from an old website. So if you are moving your website over to this platform, um, there's not going to be that sort of chain shock of suddenly you go to that URL and everything's different and you're like, what's going on? So um, basically we've designed something that each local framework can sort of take and adapt how they'd like. Um, one aspect that we've sort of learned about with doing sort of a, a living document 
is version control. Um, so let's say, specifically, this is going to be one example, you're a local authority archaeologist and you're saying, okay, you put a condition and you say they need to answer or try to answer these questions. Or maybe it's a commercial company saying, we're going to do this project and we're going to try to answer these questions um, based off the pages on this research framework. And then, you know, projects take a couple of years, maybe something goes a bit wrong, people then go back and try to find what this is and it's changed. And they're like, wait, you're referencing this, but it's not there. So we've uh, created basically every page has citation and then a link to the Internet Archive. So um, basically when you're using this research framework and you want to cite it, you could cite it right there and someone will be able to access it and see it exactly as it was on the day and time that you last saw it or when you first cited it. Uh, so the idea there is basically it's going to change. It's meant to change. Uh, we're hoping that people are using this, making comments, changing the questions, changing, um, up, you know, adding new data, adding new text, everything like that. But for practical reasons, you could still go back to that time when you were using it at that very moment and without any issue. Um, and then this is sort of uh, basically, it's all focused around questions. So uh, here's just sort of the Roman period. Um, and here's a question which is way too small for people to read. <laughs> but the question's not important, important. it's about um, people coming over in the conquest period. Uh, but there's different parts, so there's all sorts of metadata. So you can add to the question, why is it important? Why should we be answering this question? And that comes with that question. Um, different things you can highlight is, you know, has this question actually been answered? Or is it still active? So uh, we think it's a really good idea to have the ability to say, actually, this question was answered, but you can see a list of everything we've done, and you can actually start to sort of plot out, gee, are we actually doing anything with these research frameworks, or we just added more and more questions over the time and never answered anything. So that's uh, one of the things you could do. We're linking it into periods as well. Um, there's a lot of linked data aspects as well. Um, and then also things like down here is, where was this question first asked? All research frameworks can borrow questions from other research frameworks. So if you have the same question, or near enough that you're willing to use the same question from other research frameworks, why reinvent the wheel? Just take the question and use it. It'll be a credit. But also when you're searching, you'll be able to see, actually, these three different research frameworks are trying to answer the same question about the Romans in the third century, um, or whatever your question is. And that's the thing. Um, and also it has things like, you know, if you think this question has been answered, who, who decides that? That's all sorts of bits of uh, metadata. Um, and so one of the things we're doing as well, um, I'm really glad Peter, is Peter still? Yeah, Peter, yeah, Peter talked all about this. Um, heritage data, we have vocabularies, and basically you'll be able to tag any question with one of these vocabularies and be able to search across Again, research framework. So if you have the category of, say, Roman period, and you want to see all the related questions across all the research frameworks everywhere, you could choose that. Or you could do Roman period in a specific region and just see the questions for that. Um, that's based off the heritage data. Um, and we're going to be using all the vocabularies from there for people to be able to choose topics. Uh, though as of Wednesday, we've decided that you could still add your own uh, term for those topics. If you want to, you still have to use an underlying concept. Um, but some people have different uh, terms. So, you know, maybe it's ceramics, maybe it's pottery. It, as long as it's, it's linked to the same sort of term, you can use whatever you want, as long as there's some sort of concept that everyone understands. And uh, again, open contacts is helping us do linked data. You'll be able to pull, anyone who wants to, be able to pull these questions off. Um, there'll be an API. Uh, hopefully, other organizations will be able to use this information and incorporate it. So uh, there's talks about the new OASIS. Um, eventually, if when you're going to the forum, you just want to see all the questions that are in your area and say, actually, we've answered that. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'd just like to end with, so we're in the middle of testing this out, so it's still in process. But I think this is probably some of the best uh, feedback we've gotten so far. Um, it was just a surprise of, it's just a website. Which, from like a designer point of view, is exactly what we want to hear. Because it meant we made it easy enough. Someone's like, oh, yeah, yeah. 
It's a website. Uh, I can do this. I can do this. Um, and that's what we're trying to do is make this user friendly enough that basically anyone will be able to use the research framework. You don't need to also be an expert in computer science and archaeology to try to be able to use online research frameworks. So that's our goal. And thank you and thanks uh, for the funders as well. Thank you.